Well, amen. Thank you so much, Grayson and Manny Joe. I appreciate y'all so much. I, I just be honest with you. My heart's just been grinning from ear to ear. God is good. Amen. I mean, how awesome is that? God is so good. You know what else is just making me grin from ear to ear? Yesterday morning. This place was so filled with the Holy Spirit, with the ladies' ministry, people emptying themselves of themselves and filling their self with God, man, the Holy Spirit. Tears were everywhere. This altar was full. Golly, what God did yesterday morning in this place. Praise God for His power and His might. Those three ladies that shared their testimonies and their stories just just, just shook the rafters with what God is doing in lives all around us. And you know what? He's still doing it. Amen? He's still on the throne. Praise God, He's still on the throne. So what can be wrong, right? If He's still on the throne. Amen? Amen. Heaven, I can only imagine what it's going to be like. And I pray that you as well. I pray you take time to think about it. What it's going to be like. Do you realize that's why Jesus got up out of the grave? Because he had more stuff to do. To serve you and I, number one. To prepare places for you and I. And so today, we're going to go a step further. We've been talking about the resurrection. But why did he have to get up out of that grave? Because he had to ascend back to heaven. So let's look at it today. The ascension of Jesus Christ. I want to invite you to turn in your Bibles to Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. There's zero light up here. <laughs> Acts chapter 1. Beginning in verse 1. Let's read it together. The former treaties have I made, O Theophilus. Of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. Until the day in which he had taken up. Afterward that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles. Whom he had chosen. To whom also he showed himself alive. After his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them forty days. And speaking of the things pertaining to. To the gospel, of, to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, Ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? The same Jesus which is taken up from you in heaven shall so come in like manner, and ye have seen him, as ye have seen him go into heaven. Let's pray together. Father, we just come this morning again rejoicing. Father, for your work in our lives. Father, for what you would do. And Father, you are such a good God. And Father, this morning as we do rejoice, Father, we pray that your sweet Holy Spirit that was so full in this place yesterday, Father, that you just visit with us again this morning, Father, that your Spirit feel free to do the office work in each and every heart according to your will and your way. And Father, we're going to be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Well, y'all, here we are 40 days after the resurrection. And, of course, that number 40, you know, it's very significant uh, in the Bible. I mean, God has his numbers, don't he? And they all mean something. It's the number here, the number 40 for God is the, is the number of full probation and ample demonstration. What do you mean, Brother Jeff? Well... He's on full display. <laughs> to put it simple, we see it with Israel. In the wilderness, you remember how long? 40 years, right? In the wilderness there. And remember with Jonah, Nineveh, the Bible says, was to be destroyed in 40 days. And then we, we have to remember too that Christ, he fasted for 40 days. Nights in the wilderness for being tempted. And here the Bible says that, that there were many appearances of the risen Christ during the 40 days after the resurrection. Just more proof of the resurrection that Jesus is alive and well. He appeared over 500 in this 40 day period. First hand witnesses. Just more proof. But now we come to the neglected experience. And all I mean by that is that it's not talked about a whole lot. It's not preached about a whole lot. The ascension of Jesus. But y'all the ascension really is another mountaintop experience. I mean just like the Sermon on the Mount. Just like the Mount of Transfiguration or that Olivet Discourses that we saw Jesus give. Or even the beginning of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem before he went to the cross. I'm just saying this morning, it's important, brothers and sisters. And so this morning, I just want to invite you to come and view the ascension of the risen Christ with me. First, it tells us more about the resurrection and, and why that resurrection is so important for us. As I said earlier in the beginning, Christ resurrected to ascend into heaven because he had things for us there. He didn't resurrect just to offer us forgiveness and eternal life, which he did. Because of that, we have it. If we choose to receive it, right? That's important. Because many people choose not to receive it today. They choose to reject Jesus and turn Jesus away. But when we choose to receive it, we have forgiveness of sins and the promise of eternal life. But he resurrected too to ascend to heaven. Why did Christ need to ascend? Well, first this morning, Christ ascended to prepare a place. To prepare a place. Again, in verse 2, it says, Until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Do you remember the, the upper room experience? Remember the promises of the upper room, John 14, 2. Look at it here. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to do what, church? To prepare a place for you. He had to go to prepare a place for you and I. Oh, how peaceful the promises of the upper room before they were associated with his death. But now as he ascends, the promises echo again in the disciples' heart. Y'all, the creator has been preparing for us from then until now. And sometimes I just wonder if we think too little of that prepared place. 
In other words, we don't reflect upon it enough. Have we, have we forgotten to focus more on eternity? As the song says so beautifully put, I can only imagine. Have we taken time out of our life long enough to just imagine it? To reflect upon it? To focus on eternity? To get our eyes off of this earth? And these earthly things. And to focus on heaven. And the things of eternity. That song says turn your eyes upon Jesus. Right? And when we do it says the things of this earth. Will grow strangely dim. I pray you're taking time out. To focus on eternity. And the things of heaven. I mean what does the hope of heaven mean to you? Because it's why Christ descended to prepare a place. Also, Christ descended to prepare his people. In verse 4 through 8, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. What was the promise? The Holy Spirit, right? They were commanded to wait for the Holy Spirit. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, without this time restore again the kingdom to Israel. So we see the promise of the Father there. John 14, look at it here. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 16. And I will pray to the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Look at this next passage. Verse 26. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. So Jesus had to go. He had to ascend so he could send the comforter to you and I, the Holy Spirit, to teach us all things which he had commanded. He's preparing his people. And so we see the coming of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is to indwell in believers. Continue. Let's look at uh, verse 17 here. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Oh my goodness. This body. If you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of God indwells in you. I know sometimes you probably wish, boy, I, did, I wish I didn't take Jesus everywhere I went. <laughs> Hello? I wish Jesus wasn't there when I looked at that particular thing or saw that or did that. But guess what? He is. Everywhere we go, the Holy Spirit of God goes with us. He indwells in us. The Bible says this body is his temple. If you've trusted in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you were bought with a price, with a high price. And the Bible says you are not your own. That's right. yeah. You ever hear people say, especially in the ladies' movement, not to pick on that, but the abortion situation. You ever hear people, well, this is my own body. I can do with it what I will. No, it's not. It's his body. He paid the price for you. It belongs to Him. If you've trusted Him as your personal Lord and Savior. Jesus had to ascend to prepare His people. 
with the Holy Spirit. He comes, he indwells in us. And, and I'm asking you today, is he in you today? If not, he can be before you leave this place this morning. Because here is what the Holy Spirit, the coming of the Holy Spirit would do. Here it says that he will provide power for witnessing. Did you pick up on that in verse 8? Again, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Do you have that power? When you go out and witness, do you feel the power of the Holy Spirit going with you? If not, it might be reason to question, do I even have it? Are you truly saved? If you're not feeling the power of the Holy Spirit to go witness. Because my Bible says, and he will give you power to be my witnesses. So. The Bible also says that he'll provide peace for the afflicted. You remember John chapter 14, verse 27 here? Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus says, if you receive me, the Holy Spirit's living inside of you, you will experience my peace. So I have to ask this morning, are you experiencing his peace in your life? Do you have that peace? Because that's why you ascended. it. So that the comforter could come and bring you that peace. The Bible also says that, that he'll provide power to live Christ-like lives. You remember Galatians chapter 5 about the fruit of the Spirit right here? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You see, if the Holy Spirit resides into you, these things will be evident in your life. He gives you power for these things to flourish in your life. Is the Holy Spirit in you this morning? Are you experiencing the fruit of the Spirit in your life? Because He provides that power to live Christ-like and to have these characteristics in your life. So, I'm just asking this morning, is your life reflecting and expressing the fruit of the Spirit? Do you have Him in your life? Have you been born again of the Spirit of God? Because Jesus ascended to prepare you with the Holy Spirit. But to prepare you for what? To prepare you for what? Well, thirdly, I want you to know that Christ ascended to prepare for his return. To prepare for his return. Again, verse 10 and 11. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. So I gotta ask this morning, are you prepared? For heaven. I, I love these two angels here that say, Why are you men just sitting around here gazing up into heaven? What is he saying there? Look, there's work to be done. You've got to be witnesses for him. You've got to be going out. Why are you just standing around? Church, I, I look at the church a lot of times and I say, Man, why are people just gazing? Why are people just 
staring into space? Why are people just sitting and looking around? Well, God is saying, let's go. <laughs> let's get up and let's go and let's win the world for Christ. I saw three beautiful women yesterday that decided to get up and go and win people for Christ. They just came to the conclusion, God did this stuff in my life for a purpose. I've just got to live on purpose. I've got to fulfill that in my life. Why stand ye gazing? The angels say. Well, we see here the question about the kingdom in verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Here's man's curiosity at work. Man's curiosity about the time of Christ's return. But the Bible is clear, isn't it? The Bible is clear. We don't know the time. No one knows the secret, sacred time. In verse 7, it said here, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. The Son is saying, I don't know the time. The angels don't know the time. Only the Father knows the time. Matthew 24 mentions that too right here. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven even, but my Father only knows that time. Listen, one thing I do know, no one knows this sacred, secret time, but I do know this because the Bible tells us right here that this same Jesus will return. He will return, this same Jesus. Verse 11 again, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing into heaven? This same Jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. And thank God he shared with us what will happen when he does return. What will happen when Jesus returns? I mean, for instance, the saved, they're going to be resurrected, the Bible tells us. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 16 here. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, meaning dead, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, if you're one of those born again believers that believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep, in Jesus, that's a key phrase, right? In Jesus, you've been born again. Will God bring with them? Let's continue here. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. In other words, the graveyards are going to burst open. They're going to go first. They're going to be resurrected. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. In verse 17 here. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. He tells us exactly what will happen when he returns. The saved are going to be resurrected. The living believers will be then called up. Boy, wouldn't it be nice to be in a graveyard about that time? You might can catch the coattail of one of the dead rising up, right? What a day that's going to be when we sing about. What a day that's going to be. That great getting up morning. That great resurrected morning. Like I said before, that graveyard back there is going to look like fresh plowed ground, brothers and sisters. What a day that's going to be. So, yeah. We're going to be called up. But the question I really want to ask is that's what's going to happen when Jesus returns.
sermons. But what is the ascended Christ doing now? Well, again, we see that he's preparing a place for us, right? No doubt about that. John chapter 14, verse 1 through 3. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Praise the Lord for that today. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for that promise. But, but also, right now, do you know that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father? What he's doing, he's interceding for you and I. We talked about that last week, I think. He's interceding for you and I. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. I mean, we looked at this too. Wherefore, he's able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. Seeing he ever lifted to make, he ever liveth to make intercession for them. He didn't just sin to go to heaven to sit by the Father to make intercession for you and I on our behalf. Well, you might say, why, why does he need to intercede for me? Hey, don't you remember the Bible says the devil goes to and fro? Accusing the brethren. And Jesus is saying, old Jeff might have messed up, Father, but he's one of mine. <laughs> He's one of mine. He's forgiven. That ought to bring some shouting Baptist there, folks. Forgive me. He's one of mine. So he's interceding for him. Also, 1 John here. 1 John, another passage there. My little children, these things write I unto you that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. I'm writing these things to where you don't sin. But if you slip up, something happens. Praise God. We have an advocate with the Father. Who loves us. Who accepted us into his family. It's willing to hold us up. Aren't you glad he's the keeper of our salvation and not us? Amen. That he said that he said, we're in the palm of his hand and no man can take us out of his hand. Interceding on our behalf. What a great God we serve today. Now also remember that He had to ascend because he's moving people and he's moving nations into his prophetic plan. Whoa. In other words, his plan is for his, his, his prophetic plan is steadily being fulfilled, y'all. It's in motion right now as we speak. Anybody watch the news yesterday? Not only by Hamas, an Iranian proxy has Israel come under attack, but now Iran directly yesterday began to bomb Israel. You want to know the seasons when Jesus is coming again? You may not know the time. Keep your eyes on Israel. Israel is God's prophetic time clock for the end time. You keep your eye on Israel. What's going on over there? Folks, I may not know when, but I know we're closer today than we were yesterday to the end time. Pray for Israel. Stand beside Israel. Because God says, those that bless Israel, I will bless. And I will curse those that curse Israel. It's his prophetic time clock. You keep an eye on Israel and continue to pray for them. So he's moving people and he's moving nations into his prophetic plan. That's what he's doing now. 
and rest assured, Christ will return right on time. Only question here today is, are you prepared for his return? Because Christ prepared his disciples for what was coming. And he, he wants to prepare you too with the Holy Spirit this morning. And are you prepared to serve the Lord until He comes? To not be standing around just gazing, just waiting, but serving the Lord until He comes with the Holy Spirit's power? And once again, are you ready for Christ's return? Because he's coming again, brothers and sisters. So let me encourage you today. Hear me now. Let me encourage you today not to get left, but to get right with Jesus. Amen? Amen. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this morning, we thank you for another opportunity to hear your word preached in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to get right with Jesus. Father, I pray this morning if there's anyone that's not prepared for his return. Father, I do pray that they choose not to get left behind, but Father, they choose to get right with Jesus today before it is everlasting too late. Father, you, by your grace, said that through faith in Jesus Christ as Lord in our life, we can be saved. Saved from our sins, saved from hell, <coughs> and saved to go to a place that Jesus has ascended to prepare, a place called heaven. Father, I thank you for those that have already chosen to go there by accepting Jesus as their Lord. Father, I pray that they have the power of the Holy Spirit working in them because he's there if they know you. Father, that they choose to be busy about your business, the work of witnessing and sharing the love of Jesus with the entire world. Father, I do realize today that there may be some that's never made that decision. The Holy Spirit is not living inside them today. Father, they realize that today. So, Father, by your love, by your grace, by your Holy Spirit, I pray now that you just draw them to salvation. Before it is everlasting too late, that they come today as we sing this next song. And Father, they just say, I need Jesus. Father, we're going to be careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory for what you're going to do as always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.